I'm Rob LeCurie, a senior editor at Gold Derby, here with Elizabeth Tabicki. First of all, Elizabeth, congrats on your Golden Globe nomination. That's so cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you know, you've won a ton of awards back home in Australia, and you were probably this close, I think, to like Oscar buzz and consideration and then a nomination for Widows. So you're now on this awards trajectory for uh, The Crown playing Diana. What do accolades like that mean to you? Well, if I'm honest with you, I mean, it's, it's very nice of you to say that about the my career in the past. I, I've been so lucky to win actor awards in Australia and um, and uh, I know they just happened this that ceremony and I I don't know I always get a bit homesick because I think it's because it's a place where so many of my beloveds gather and you know yeah so I you know that was always a very lovely and unexpected truly I mean I think the first one was for Gatsby yeah which feels like you know 100 years ago but but I think in a way, it, it doesn't feel like it's been a part of my life, really. I haven't really ever been involved in something that, like you, I don't know how you just phrased it, but the sort of awards run or a lead up to yeah. it. It's not really been a part of my life before as an actor. And in a way, I'm, I'm pretty new to it. And it's so, I, I mean, I was really, really surprised about the Golden Globe nomination and it felt really lovely to read it and you know my phone kind of blew up but I, I'd completely forgotten that that was a thing you know I guess in a way it's like being kind of blissfully unaware of that um yeah. I wonder if it changes something about your process or just the way you view the business in a way if that's something you've been involved in some people from a really young age right from almost their first work and that's something that becomes the cycle becomes a part of the process perhaps or or the after the aftermath of making the thing, but I've never really had that before. So that's probably yeah. good, actually. <clears throat> it's I mean, know, yeah. Just get on with your life. I, it, I think it is. I think there there are elements of unaware of of being unaware that are blissful, and I think creatively, you know, I've been really really fortunate in so many ways to just stay. I just stay in the bubble of the thing I make, and then I sort of go back into real life and. Yeah. I don't, you know, I've never been somebody who's who's had to deal with even like public recognition or anything ever. Yeah. So I always feel like in a way I've been so lucky to just work with incredible people and like sometimes like just beautiful projects. And then I just go back to normal life and then I work again, you know, and that's yeah. for me, that's been amazing. That's gold. Um, let's talk about The Crown because... Honestly, everyone that I speak to about season five, people want to talk about you in this role. It's like you were meant, it was meant to be. Um, not only because of your physical likeness to Diana, but just in the way that you're able to capture her, her cadence and her body language, you know, her facial expressions, really amazing. Um, so let's start with this. The show does a really admirable job you know, with humanising the royal family, whether, whether you like them or you're not, or you don't, whether you're a monarchist or you're not, it doesn't matter. These are just about people and this position of power and and it's fascinating. What preconceptions then did you have about Diana and the family and did they change or adapt after playing her? Uh, yes, definitely changed and adapted. Um, I would say, I've always kind of said that the way I... What I the canvas I came to this with was relatively neutral. I I mean I think for me as an actor it was an advantage to be an Australian coming into this role because in a way I got to look at the world of the character, the character that itself, the history of the country in the nineties. All these things were foreign to me in so many ways, and so I got to just open up that booklet of research and in a way have this distance from it, so I could absorb it without memory, without agenda, or without really any opinions that have been solidified yet. Mm. I think my my feeling about Diana before I knew I was going to play her was that she was a figure that sort of, and I still, I still, I can still talk about it in this way because it's still, there's still a piece of me that was able to sort of retain that, that love and admiration in the distance of this person who was 
an icon who had this incredible journey through her life, who represents so much for women, uh, was extremely progressive. And also I think my relationship to her was also, was sort of through her being a mother to these incredible children and through what they had to go through. I mean, it's a question you get asked quite a bit playing, playing this character is sort of what is your earliest memory or, and I grew up in Australia and I think like lots of people my age, my first understanding of this person's significance was through watching my parents watch the funeral. Mm. And and maybe a vague memory of, you know, her face on a magazine when you're waiting in the line at Coles or Safeway or something, you know. Yeah. Buying groceries with your mum. But so like, so in a way, it's sort of my my age and also my my geographical distance, I think, was an advantage because I could enter into it with maybe a little more room to make up my mind. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, that's that's actually yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I think. I think that probably would have helped tremendously. There's no preconceived notions about her. In fact, it reminds me that, you know, when actors play real people, particularly people like the Royals, there's so much uh, entrenched kind of uh, expectation heaped on it and uh, preconceived notions that we have about them. And you have to toe this very delicate line of um, playing this character authentically and also uh, making sure that she comes across as you know what we expect and then you don't want to mimic or parody even her you want her to be real so was that difficult for you to get into that mindset when you first start started production yes I you know it was a really interesting kind of multi-layered process it's totally unlike anything I've done before I think a layer of it if I'm honest is just immense pressure and and it's almost twofold pressure because it's pressure to play this this real life person, which in this case, or, or to come close to a suggestion of that person, which in this case is completely unique in the sense that our collective consciousness, our memory, uh, this, this person, this real life person, if we're talking about Princess Diana, the way that she lives in people's memory is still the way that people miss her, the way that people still feel like they need her in their cultural kind of life. It's it's totally a unique kind of presence that she had when she was with us and she still has, Yeah, you know, decades past. And so that's enormous pressure because you think, well, how do I get, how am I able to sort of enter into that and decipher what that is and then sort of give that, give that through the show somehow, give that back to people. And then I think the other thing is the pressure of taking, it's totally unique in the show as well, because you're taking the, the kind, we were talking about like a baton pass, it's like a relay and someone right. sort of gives you, and I took it from Emma. And so, you know, and I'm watching, I'm in lockdown watching Emma be astounding and be incredibly good and going, okay, you know, and also having watched, having watched the show just as a sort of, fan mm. removed for you so put those two things together that's enough to just make you think I'm completely mad for saying yes to this job <laughs> and then and then if you're like me I I sort of can fall down the research rabbit hole pretty deep I I mean I found it I my knowledge like I said of, of the royals in the 90s was very limited so everything I was learning like I, I would assume a lot of people who are watching these shows a lot of the sort of real life reenactments or what, you know, the kind of closer to factual, it's sort of the things that Peter talks about, the things that we can't avoid when telling this story that follows this time span, the, the mm. events that people expect to see in these, in these years that we cover. Those things were, a lot of them were very new to me. So I sort of got the research documents sent to me. I was actually in Australia at the time and talking to the research lady, Annie, and she was like, well, how much of it do you want? I was like, I just give it all, just give it all to me. And it's like, here, yeah, nothing to do. And of course, it's this, this like, these <laughs> volumes land on my lap. Not only that, it's sort of like, so much of it has this, not the research documents she said, but she sent, but as soon as you start reading any books, it's sort of like, there's agendas, there's 
what's true, what's not true. It's this person's lived memory, that person's, what do they think of her? What do they try and get across in terms of their relationship to history? It's <laughs> complex, you know. Wow. People being like, this happened, but it wasn't. And a lot of people sort of saying, well, I remember this and this couldn't have happened like that. Because, and, and it's a minefield. And then, and then all of that was whirling around at the beginning of the process for this. And, and then this sort of really, um, thankfully kind of this godsend moment where you actually get a script and then you read the script and you realize it's all, all of what you've picked up and absorbed is being and watched and listened and everything is, is sort of now being refined and funneled into this blueprint, yeah. very, very clear blueprint, which is clearly Peter's interpretation of these people. This is their voice. This is who they are. This is what they say. Like any actor's job is then to sort of say, okay, now I interpret your vision of this person. And um, yeah. that, was, that was a kind of, <laughs> I was very grateful for that moment because I sort of went from feeling like it's, a completely overwhelming process to to sort of going oh I know how to do this this is what I do as an actor yeah, so. right exactly and um, that yeah. that reminds me of this because so for the first few scenes I'm watching you and Dominic as Charles and I'm thinking wow like they've really captured their essence you look a lot like her this is wonderful I'm going to really get into this I know Diana I feel familiar do you know that it's hard for me to put into words but that started to evaporate because then Diana just becomes like a a human being and she's she's like really um she's a shell of a person she's kind of depressed she's also beautiful amazing in public she's a great mum and there's all these things that I started to uh, uh connect about her that had nothing to do with who she was and so I then wondered okay um how do you like what what work did you have to do to just think about her you know her body language her facial feature her facial expressions like the panorama interview it's it's uncanny mm. it's exactly like the interview that we watched back in the day but I wasn't thinking about that I was thinking about what she was going through as a person and that's a really difficult thing I think for um, performers like yourself to do mm. well I'm glad that that was your experience because I think you know, it, and I guess this is kind of sort of what the crown has done. And in a way, it's a real gift and an advantage to the actors because you go into this job knowing that what, you're never you're never aiming for something that's um, that needs that you're never aiming to sort of like come so close to the. It's not about it's about essence. I know that sounds sort of like this untangible thing, but it's sort of about capturing something that, like I said, that suggests something to the viewer, and then you hope that you've given them enough in a way that they then will come, will trust you as the actor and will sort of come on that psychological journey with you. Um, so I'm glad to hear that that was what was happening because it's a really, it's an interesting balance. It's, it's, it's very muscular. It's never, you never feel like, I, I find it difficult to describe because I'm never sort of like, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like every day and I'm still shooting season six. Yeah. Um, back to work in like 10 hours so I every day and it's part of the challenge and the satisfaction of this job but also the challenge of it it's like you never you're always sort of looking for it and you never quite figured out oh this is this is how it works every day it's like you sort of come closer to that sort of humming center of it and then you you know you might drift away a little bit or you become hypercritical or where you think, oh no, I don't, I don't know if that was close to it, but the people who are watching the thing are receiving something different, and yeah, which is what happens anyway as an actor, right? You know how many actors sort of think, I don't, I feel like this is so, every actor's experience is where you think, oh no, give me another take, and the director goes, no, that was it, and what you're giving and what you're feeling on the inside are often so different, but with this, you know, there was there was there was a methodology that the show the machinery of the show in a way has in place, which is to do with the people we work with, the dialect coaches, William Conacher, who's sort of like the royal voices expert and, and amazing at it. And Polly Bennett, who, who's the movement coach. I think what they gave me, and I, in a way, blissfully had time for this because it was during this really strange period of our history where I wasn't working on anything else and I was 
I was in Australia and I was living with my sister and I was like, I, I have all this time to immerse. I guess there was a part of me that unconsciously thought, if I just spend a lot of time near this, listening to the kind of sonic landscape of this character and I don't know, you just sort of slowly absorb it because what yeah. you don't want is to be thinking. So you, it's sort of like you always have to spend enough time swimming around in it that you, when when push comes to shove and you actually have to suddenly do it in front of a camera, which by the way, the first time I did it was totally terrifying. <laughs> um, you want you want to have at least this feeling like something's going to catch you, like some some degree of your of your prep is there yeah. um and then it sort of is like a muscle I know a lot of the actors who work on the show feel that that like they then the longer they do it the more confident we become that it's sort of <laughs> working yeah. but uh yeah it's very very unique and I, I will say that it was a lot for instance something like the panorama interview was just more watching of a thing than I have ever experienced in my life as a person and an actor, like the amount of time I spent, um, because it's it's this double-edged sword. It's like you have the real thing there. That's but right. Then because the real thing is there, how how do I then throw that away? You know, so you just I, I, I'm it. amazed that the show Peter Morgan even attempted to go there because you're right. Like I kept thinking, looking at watching you in particular, more than probably maybe anyone else apart from Imelda and, and the other previous uh, actors who played the queen, this could have gone really awry. Like it could have been a disaster. And I mean, thank God it's not at all because this is why we're chatting. Uh, it's, it's actually a triumph, but wow, this is the pressure. And there's another episode, couple 31, episode nine, where the scene with the, you and Dominic, at the table where you have that last reckoning before they go their separate ways. I was blown away because then I just forgot that we were talking about the Prince and Princess of Wales. And I was just thinking, these are just, this is a couple, we all go through stuff like that, you know, very humanizing. So that's a gift, but there is something I wanted to raise with you before we go. And that is you're on production for season six. There's going to be a hell of a lot of attention on the show when that comes out because of it's going to deal with Diana's death. I know you've said it's it does so very sensitively. Dominic also agrees. He told me that a few weeks ago. But, I mean, you, you've already got all this challenge. This has got it. It raises it to 11. So how's season six been for you, given the, the pressure to make sure that you all honour her legacy in, in a particular way? Mm. Um. You know, it's like I said, because I'm doing it at the moment, it's difficult for me to sort of explain how it feels to do it. Mm. Um, I guess my hope going into this, more than anything, you just hope that you, like you said, that you honour something as as close to a your interpretation of the truth of this character as you can get, which is always your job, but I would be lying if I said that the responsibility I felt going into this and maybe particularly now is, is a, you know, I take that very seriously. And I think we all do on this show. I mean, I know we all do on the show, but you know, I, yeah, I'm sort of carrying that in my body at the moment, in my heart. It's, it's not easy. It's it is being done with grace. It's an undeniably devastating thing. So it's you know it yeah. I don't imagine I'll ever have to or you know be asked to do anything that comes close to this. Like I said, the layers of it being both you know real in memories for people imagined on the screen. A, you know getting close to something but also allowing for an interpretation it's quite it's super complex but you know I'm doing my best <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely are um Elizabeth it's been a real pleasure I thank you uh, for your time it's been it's, it's an amazing performance I can't wait to see you on the Emmy's red carpet uh, next year as well I'm not jinxing that thank you again thanks Aaron. thank you so much nice to meet you